Hey everyone, Spencer again with another Tuesday Tech Tip. And today we're going to be continuing with what we left off with the last two weeks. Uh, so we're just going to be jumping right into our Proxmox environment to start talking more about Proxmox's own backup server. All right, so last time we talked about how uh, Proxmox can do integrated backups using any file-based share. So we used an SMB share. Uh, we backed up a VM to it, showed how to restore it, things like that. Uh, but at the end, I talked about how Proxmox has its own backup server solution, uh, which it affectionately calls Proxmox Backup Server. Um, so this is it right here. Um, it's, a, it's a very similar UI to the virtual environment. We're not really going to go over how to set up Proxmox Backup Server right now. I just wanted to really talk about its functionality, what it can do. So uh, what it looks like, though, is in our Proxmox environment, I have a different type of storage here. Uh, if I go to data center and I go to storage, we can see we have one called uh, backup server. The type is Proxmox backup server, and it's taking uh, VZ dump files. Uh, if I edit that, you can see all the information I needed to pass into that. So the ID of the server, uh, the server address, the username I was going to use, the password, and this fingerprint, which um, very similar to how you would join uh, to a cluster in Proxmox. It's a basically a string of information for identity purposes. But why would you want to use Proxmox's own backup solution uh, compared to something like SMB or NFS or any other type of file backup? Uh, the main reason there is that Proxmox Backup Server has just more functionality. Uh, so one of the main functionalities that it brings is what it calls a single file restore. So rather than needing to restore the entire VM, you can basically pull up the VM as a file system and pull out individual files. Uh, so that's what we're going to show today, mostly. Um, so I created this Windows VM here. If I jump into its console, uh, we can see um, standard Windows desktop. Uh, and I have a text file here called my uh, very important Proxmox video script. If we open it up, we can see uh, talk about Proxmox. It's pretty much how scripting works here. With that in mind, though, let's say something catastrophically wrong happens to this VM. Oh, no, my script is gone. Our videos are doomed. Um, all I need to do, though, is go to the uh, Proxmox backup server. So right here, the, the backup server storage in backups. I can see that VM uh, 101, which is the Windows best practices. I made this backup earlier because uh, we didn't want to sit here and wait for a, a VM to finish its backup state, uh, but it is the same VM. If I click File Restore, which is an option notably lacking in something like the SMB share here, if I go to the SMB share, you can see that button just doesn't exist. Uh, but back in there, click the VM, click File Restore. It'll take a couple minutes, um, but you can see here, we now have uh, basically a readout of the actual file system of that Windows box. So if I go into Part, I can go to Part 2, which is basically my C drive, and I can see right there, very important Proxmox script.txt. Click it. Click Download. It'll download to my desktop. I'll open it up. And you can see, again, talk about Proxmox. Thank God our videos are saved. Um, so that's kind of the main reason you'd want to use Proxmox Backup Server. Of course, there's other reasons. Uh, Proxmox Backup Server is running ZFS under the hood. Uh, so you can see this data store on the backup server uh, is literally just standard uh, ZFS. So it works well on any traditional NAS you may have. This one just has a small little array going on. Uh, so you do get all the functionality that comes with uh, ZFS as well. So redundancy with your RAID and things like that. But I'd say the kind of glaring advantage of Proxmox Backup Server over traditional backups is, of course, uh, that file restore option uh, and also live restore. So you can restore the VM and then actively be working on it while it is restoring all of your data, just maybe in like a reduced operational state. One last thing before we jump off. I did mention in the previous video that we could uh, backup in two ways, either by a backup job or by individual VMs. But uh, watching that video, I realized I never actually covered how to make backup jobs. Uh, so we're going to cover that really quick before the end of this video. Um, all you have to do for backup jobs, though, is go to the data center level of your actual Proxbox environment, click the Backup tab, click Add. And that brings up your little creation uh, menu here, where you can select what nodes you're going to be backing up. So if you only want to pull VMs from you know, node 1, node 2, node 3, so on and so forth, select the VMs that you want to back up to the storage point you want to back them up to. So it could be that backup server that we were just looking at. Or like we talked about on the last video, it could be a uh, any type of file system share, such as SMB. So we'll take the backup server there. Then we can set a schedule. Uh, this is very similar to like cron syntax, uh, but we'll take a backup every 30 minutes. We can send an email if we want to, uh, to kind of alert us that that backup has been finished. <coughs> I've selected only VM 101 to be backed up. And then we just create that backup job. And that's nice and simple. Every 30 minutes, that, that VM will now back up. 
So with all that being said, uh, that's kind of the, the main advantages of Proxmox Backup Server. Uh, maybe next time we'll do some more videos on the specifics of Proxmox Backup Server. So it's set up, how to join it to a cluster, uh, things like that. But uh, for now, I think that's pretty good. All right, guys. So that kind of ends our uh, Proxmox Backup Saga, at least for now. A little two-parter for you. Uh, so like I said, we covered initial Proxmox Backup. Uh, so using just the UI tools that are within Proxmox, using any type of storage. And then we also talked about specifically uh, the Proxmox Backup Server and why you may want to use Proxmox Backup Server. Of course, we still have barely scratched the surface of Proxmox. We have a lot more to do. Haven't even talked about snapshot VMing. Haven't talked about uh, a little spoiler that you may have seen up on that Proxmox environment, Windows VMs. There's some specifics that go into creating Windows VMs that we want to cover as well. And of course, I also want to get a video out of creating the actual Proxmox backup server and what that install process looks like. So look forward to those videos. I'll see you guys next time.